Hi guys and welcome to the third part of the series. In this uh, series we are going to be building uh, this abstract composition. So let's dive in. Again we are using a starter scene. It will be available in the project description. One item from this scene we have built it in the previous video so I will reference the time frame from the previous video where you can open it and model this column. You can actually even import this column. I will have it uh, exported as its own separate model. So yeah, don't forget to do that. Okay, let's begin by creating... Now when I look at it, I see that this render lacks this part here. So yeah, let's begin with a cylinder on the bottom. Same stuff as always. Create a cylinder. Put it somewhere here, increase its radius so that it's a bit smaller than the camera. Here, add rotation segments 100 so that it is smooth. And decrease its height, put it down, kill the height segments, decrease the height even more. KF3 to jump to the right view, pull it down. Okay, add a fillet, make it two, perfect, let's continue. Okay, we now want to add the column, so I will just open the previous project and import the column. Okay, the column is here. Okay, the column is here. You can just import it using merge objects here and locate it. <clears throat> so our column, it will go somewhere here. Okay. Perfect. Let's now create this shape here. It's like a gate. What we want to do here is F4 to jump into the front view. Uh, I don't like the camera and this thing here even this background element, let's remove them from the, so we don't see them in the viewport. So Octane camera here, let's see, if I double click here, okay, nothing happens. If I double click here, okay, this is what we want to do. Okay, then double click the plane here as well. This is perfect. So this button here, this removes the camera and the plane from the viewport but it doesn't remove them or hide them from the render. So even if I went on and rendered this now, I would see the background. Yeah, fix this. So yeah, let's just move the plane a bit to the right, even, if, even though we can't see it. Okay, we will work with this at the moment. F4 to go into the front view and pick a spline pen. With a spline pen, we wanna draw something like this. Make sure that you don't click and drag. So undo, click, pull here. We want to do mm, this. This is what we want to make. And then we want to make it so like this. We want to make it pretty high here here and here. Don't worry about this. If it's not perfect, we're now going to eyeball it a bit. So make sure these two are selected. Uh, open the scale tool by pressing T and then drag this while pressing down shift and repeat that so that we align this and this edge. So let's do it here. Same thing. Let's do it here. Align here and here. Okay, now these are all aligned. Actually, this is not aligned. Okay, this as well. Let's now, I think we have to move. This is fine. Let's just eyeball it. Try to make two of these be the same. I think this is fine. So now what we want to do here is select two of these and right click chamfer and we want to drag this. Yeah, exactly. This is what we want. This is perfect. So now we have this element and we want to select the spline 
Press now Alt on our keyboard and put it inside of an extrude. This is what we get. You can, you actually don't have to rotate it at all. Just jump into the extrude, go into the object mode and reduce the offset to five centimeters, maybe 10. Okay, 10 centimeters works. Pull it to the back like this. Okay, this is fine. Although let's select all three elements of our column, go to the point mode, grab the rectangle selection and increase this. And I'll increase the height of our column, to something like this. And yeah, this is fine. Let's now select our gate here, just rotate it slightly and go to the caps and add a bevel of the size of two centimeters. One centimeter is fine. Okay. Yeah, this, this is fine. Let's now build this shape here. This is not hard. Well, let's begin with a cylinder. Put the cylinder somewhere here. Just kill the height segments. We will add them later. Reduce the radius. Pull it down. Okay. Okay. This is fine. Let's just increase the rotation segments to um, 70. Make this cylinder editable by pressing C, grab the points, move the points down here, press T to scale, scale them like this. Okay. Right click on Octane Camera and go Rigging Tags, Protection. If you don't have protection on the Rigging Tags, then just Shift C and Type protection here and enter and it will add the protection tag and now you can't move the camera at all. We want to do that because now we want to leave the camera. And come in here, select our cylinder here, it's a bit tapered now. Double click on this edge. And now what we want to do actually loop select all of the polygons here, delete this, and now we have this edge selected. Press T to scale, jump here into the top view. Press down with control and pull this. Okay. And I'll pull this up. Scale it again. You can scale, you can drag, you can click whatever, wherever you want. Something like this, pull it up. Okay. Let's jump into our camera view to see. Okay, scale it even more. Scale it more. No. Something like this. Okay. Exit the camera. Right click, close polygon hole. Okay, this is exactly what we wanted. Let's now loop select all the polygons here, or the, all the edges. So we have this edge and this edge. And S or bevel, add a bit more subdivisions and, oops. Okay, bevel and, okay, let's jump here to the, okay, this is fine. Now we want to add on top of this thing, so select select this cylinder and press down control and on top of it add a platonic shape. Okay, it doesn't add it here, but we can drag it to the center, pull it up, increase its size, let's rotate it. Okay, now let's see what we have here. I think we want a Bucky, so Bucky, Bucky is here, so Bucky is fine, let's just Okay. Okay, nice. Our bucket is here. Let's now create a triangle. We have done that before, but let's do it again. Uh, it's not hard. Let's pick an end size. Want to make the sides of three. Three rotated. So here, scale it down, and press down Control so that we make a so that we make a rectangle on top of the triangle. Pull it down, uh, scale it down, make width, make height bigger than width, and this is important, rotate it like this so that we can't really see it by the camera. Okay, now create a sweep element and put a rectangle and a triangle inside of it, so the rectangle should go first, and this is our sweep, let's rotate it like this, we'll put it somewhere here, nice. 
So maybe select the rectangle and scale it down. But select the rectangle and trap length with the width, so not width with the height. So to do this. Okay. Now what we want to do is in the rectangle round select rounding that will add a fillet to it. And maybe put the radius to only one. Let's pick the rectangle and decrease the not the height but the width. Yeah, make the width kind of small and add just a slight radius, 0.3. Nice. Okay, this will add uh, simple reflections, but it will be cool. Make sure the triangle does not float. Nice. Okay, now let's create a cylinder. We're making this, sh this shape here. So it's a half of the cylinder with a sphere on top. Pretty simple. So a cylinder goes here. Kill the height segments. Rotate it. Slice it. Then rotate it again. Put it down. Rotate it. And decrease the radius. Let's scale it down, put it somewhere here. I want to select these and pull them up. And pull our, put our cylinder somewhere here. And de decrease the height of it, put it here. Okay, so let's in the cylinder add a fillet and radius, put it one. With having the cylinder selected, create a sphere while pressing down control so that it adds sphere on top of it. For the sphere to be smooth, increase its segments to 60. Okay, let's now add this element. We actually created this element in the first scene. So you can just import it. I will have a folder with all of these uh, shapes so that you can import them. Here they are, here it is, this is this shape, I'll put it here, and then below the shape you want to put a cylinder, reduce its radius, reduce its height, reduce the radius a bit more, and yeah, put it here. Mm, cylinder, increase the rotation segments to maybe 40 and increase the radius a bit so that it's, that it's not super thin. And what we want to do is just press down control and duplicate this, like put this to here and pull them here. Let's see how this looks. Looks fine, although I would like to rotate it all a bit. So select all of them and rotate them, maybe like this. Nice. And then on the bottom, I want to add a cylinder. So select this one and then press down control and create a cylinder so that it adds it here. And just put it here. Let's see, it's here. It doesn't matter if these are over sectioning. Repetition segments to 50 and add a caps, fill it, fill it goes to 1. And then in between, we want to put a sphere. So press down control to add a sphere here and sphere goes here. Increase the sphere segment. So this sphere is small, so we can just put 30. It will look good. Nice. Now we want to put a stairs here. So you can import the stairs. I will just copy them from another file, but you can use the merge. You can use the merge object here and select the stairs. There will be a folder for it. Here are the stairs. You can put them here. Just open the point mode and select all of these. Make sure that only select only visible elements is not selected. Now, when our axis is like this, press E on your keyboard and then go into modeling axis and change these until you find the one that works for us. And in our scenario, it's the object. Just put it like pull it like this. Pull it more. Okay. Okay, these are the stairs that we wanted. They are a bit wide, but it works. This will be cool. Okay, now let's add, let's add the, these. 
So it's a huge, it's a huge cylinder here, and then a small cylinder, the cylinder, and then another one, then a sphere, and then this detail. So let's do it. Cylinder. Put it like here. It's in front of the gate. It's a huge one. So it's a huge one. Put it here. Put it down. Go down, kill the height segments. Rotation segments go to 50. The caps activate the fillet radius to 2. Okay, actually, decrease the radius and increase the height. Pull it up. Okay, this is fine. Pull this up, duplicate it, decrease the radius, decrease the height. This one goes here, pull this one up, again increase the radius, decrease the height, scale it down. The height should be, be a bit bigger. Okay, pressing this, add a sphere, pressing down control, sphere goes on top of it, increase the segments to 60, and then pressing down this control, add a Cone, rotate the cone and drag it down, scale it down, and scale this one down, scale it down, put it here, and then press down control and add a sphere and scale the sphere down top of the cone. Nice. Let's just pull two of these down and scale the sphere even more. Nice. Oh, then we want to add on top of this, we want to add a Cylinder, so press down control, add a cylinder here, drag it, resize it, and pull it up here, okay. and then add 50 rotation segments, kill the height segments, slice it, and add a fillet of two, and then rotate it like this. Nice. Then with this still selected, add another cylinder. Actually, you don't have to copy-paste this one, press E, and then move it here. Scale it down, and then unslice it like this. This is it. Press F4 and move it here so that it doesn't fall. I'll just put it maybe here. This will be cooler, more dynamic. And in the object, rotation segments 50, this is fine. Okay, now we want to add this, and that is a tube, so pull a, rotate a tube like this, kill the height segments again, increase the height, put it here, increase the radius, put it somewhere here, okay. Now what we want to do is add rotation segments, so 100, and Fillet it. Fillet radius. Fillet radius. Put it to one. Okay. Now what we want to do here is duplicate this tube, and we don't just want to scale it. We want to preserve the. Let's see what happens if we just scale it. If we just scale it, we lose. We lose some of the thickness. But maybe we can just increase the increase the inner radius, and this is what we get. I think this is fine. So just eyeball it. Make sure that this one is wide as this one. You can eyeball it. Do the same again. Oops, maybe it's better to do it here. So duplicate this one, then scale it down, and then increase the radius a bit. Okay, this is fine. Let's now slice all select all three and select slice, and then just control the slice of all three elements. So, whoops. Something like this. Yeah. yeah, this is perfect. So with all three selected, rotate them, something like this. Nice. And with the smallest one selected, add a sphere on top of it by pressing down control and adding a sphere. Scale it down, this is perfect. Okay. Let's now add this. So we will use this element, these two, but just duplicate them. 
So select this one. Actually, we need another one here. So add it, just add it here. Maybe reduce the height. Add it here, nice. Maybe reduce the radius as well. It doesn't matter. Let's click on these two. Press on control and just drag this here. Yeah, it's here. Press F3 to see if it's floating. It's not floating. And what we want to do is select these. Select C on your keyboard to make them editable. Merge them actually. No, don't merge them. And then we're going to points mode, select all the points, press T to scale and scale them like this so that we make this wider. Make sure it's not floating. Okay, now select the bottom element and drag it up. Put it here. Nice. And then on top of it, we're going to put these tubes. And so select this, press on control, add a tube to it. Rotate the tube. We go to the top mode, rotate it like this. Decrease the radius. Okay, this is our tube. Let's see, the inner and outer radius are like this. Just scale it down. Pull it down. Kill the height segments, you don't... The height segments kill them, you don't need them. And then jump into the top mode. Okay, if your axis is like this, this sucks. Just uh, press E when you have this selected and go into... Hmm. Yeah, why did this happen? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe... We can maybe just put this into a corner. Never mind, let's just pull this down. Make sure that nothing is floating. I think this element... I think this element here is floating a bit, so pull it down. And then pull this down. For the rotation segments, put 50. And what you want to do now is put this tube in a corner. And let's see, put the corner to linear. Ah, yeah, this is perfect. Okay, make three of them. Make sure they are almost intersecting. So 34.5, 34 34.3, uh, 34. No, 33. Okay, that's it. 33 works. Now select the corner and press C to make it editable. This is perfect. Add a, just click on this one and control add a sphere. Put it here. Okay, for this sphere, make sure it has 16 segments and select C to make it editable. And then go into the polygon mode, select Ctrl A to select everything, press D and make sure the preserve groups is not selected and just do, do a slight extrusion. Go back to the object mode and add it as a child of subdivision surface by pressing down Alt and clicking here and you will, uh, it will create this. Let's leave the camera view to show you what it looks like. Yeah, that's it. Let's just pull it down so that it doesn't float. And one last element we want to add down at the bottom, it's a tube. Just put it here, rotate it, scale it down, um, ro rotate it a bit like this, pull it down. I think because this is selected, we get this we get this bug with this access point. I rotated this, but my E stays like this. I'm not sure why this happens. Maybe it's this. Oh yeah, I, it's this coordinate system. This shortcut is W. Okay, make sure you don't get this wrong. You might be lost. So just add it here, increase the rotation segments to like 100, no 50 is fine. 
Mm, jump here and increase the height, but reduce the radius so that you can get a nice tube. Make sure it's not floating. And then you want to add a cylinder into the tube. So press down control, add a cylinder like this. Press F4. And let's see, we want to dec decrease the height. Rotation segments is 50 and slice it. And then move the slice like this. Actually, let's slice it 180 degrees and then rotate it. Let's see, rotate it like this. Nice. This is it. We're ready to render this. So we have our old shaders. You can pick them from another file. I'm just gonna show you. Like you, can, you can create a standard glossy octane glossy material. So let's just turn on the octane live viewer. You already probably have the octane options. If not, pause the video, copy these into your octane. And you have these shaders. This is a standard glossy octane shader with 50% roughness. So we have pink, we have blue, we have gold, we have yellowish orange and pink, yeah, a bit of transparency. So let's add uh, an HDRI. We will use a Studio 3 and fire up our octane. So increase the power here. Make sure whenever you add an HDRI to click on in here and then here add an HDRI because if you add an HDRI exactly here you will get your image will blow. Now I see that these stairs are floating so click on stairs F3 to jump into the right press E to pull them down. Okay nice. So increase lighting here from the side. Okay. Let's now shade our scene. We want yellow background now when I drag and drop this onto the scene it adds it to the octane sky let's just try putting the octane sky here let's see if that solves the problem I'm not 100% sure if it does it does not maybe that's because the plane is hidden let's see oh this is fine so make the show the plane again by it was red here so make sure it's not red anymore so that we can see the camera and the plane as well let's just rotate our hdri a bit so that we get more light nice okay let's shade this we want these stairs to be blue we want this to be yellow we want this to be blue this bucky is floating let's pull it down Okay, we want this in the middle to be golden and this thing to be blue, this thing to be pink, this thing to be yellow. The column is fully blue. This shape here is pink and this shape is yellow. This shape is yellow, this shape is blue. This shape is yellow, this shape is pink. This shape is yellow, this shape is blue. This is pink, this little thing is gold as well. This is blue, this is pink, this is blue, this is pink, two purples. Okay, let's add some purple, we forgot that. So purple, let's make this purple. And let's make the bot here purple. All three of these, let's actually make these pillars yellow. The thing that floats here, let's make that gold. This one is purple and this one is pink. This one is purple as well. And this one is... Let's make this one blue. And the bottom is pink. Okay. Okay, now for our HDRI, let's just rotate it a bit. Like get this side lighting here, but now left is in a lot of shadows. So create an octane light. And the visibility, uncheck two of these, reduce this, put 
the power to like 10. Select the light, rotate it, pull it here, jump into the F3, pull it up, scale it up, and move it somewhere here. Let's see how we can light this to be more attractive. Now I see these three tubes are not shaded, so let's just shade them. Okay, remove the production tag from the camera and frame this better. I don't like that this is gold here and we lost fillets here. So increase the fillet to 1. Click on this, increase the fillet to 1.5. And click on this and increase the fillet to 2. Okay. Let's see here. Maybe we can rotate the HDRI a bit more or at least reduce it. Let's change the color of this shape. Okay. Increase the HDRI lighting a bit. Okay, this is now ready to render. Let's actually click on the plane here and increase its width so that it covers the whole background. And good job guys, this is the third one of our course. We made it this far, great work, let's continue. You can now resize this, of course, make the resolution that you want, render it out, we will deal, deal with the post-production later. Now when I look at this cone here, it's a very flat. So I don't want that, I want it to be a bit more shaded. So I will select my light here and somehow maybe rotate it, pull it somewhere, put it somehow, so rotate it like this maybe. I want some light there, but I don't want to kill. Maybe put the light here. This is not bad, maybe reduce... Yeah, this is interesting. Let's open, so right click here and go select material and then make this purple, reduce the roughness and increase the index to something like 1.8 to see what will happen. Material, select. I'm using the same material but different. Okay, this adds, it makes it look like some sort of plastic. So let's see. Now this is in. Maybe select this. Select two of these and maybe rotate them a bit so that they catch some light. Put it down. Nice. Let's select this one and leave the camera view actually. Make it editable and select this and MS. Nice. Now we get this reflection here. That will be cool. Yeah, we can see the reflection here. These are tiny details. It's really, they can pop your ex uh, you can pop your compositions. I hate that this shape is not getting any light. So I might want to like add a little light there. Reduce camera visibility, shadow visibility, light settings, put it to like 9. And then jump into the top view, press E. And what I want to do is rotate this light here. Go into the object mode and make it really small. Put and put it here. But let's now see if we can get some light on this ball here. Let me 
like this. It's here. Let's see. Okay, this is too strong. Let's try 30. Okay, it's taking a longer time to clear up. At least the sampling rate here to 10. Whoops. Increase the sampling to 10. 10 is too much. Put 3. Okay, 3 is too much, maybe 2. Let's try making this. I like when this is golden and I will remove this light that doesn't add anything. I like this. Let's maybe try beveling the edges on this bucky. So make the bucky editable, select all the edges, MS, and bevel them. We get these reflections. Okay. Okay, I like this. This is ready to render and let's continue with the course. Take care, guys. Hi, guys. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to light the third composition uh, to get the look like this. So let's begin. I already have it lit, so I'm just going to turn everything off here and I'm going to remove, I'm going to move the HDRI here and just turn off the HDRI to begin with. So in order, I mean, yeah, let's first turn on the HDRI. So as you can see in the HDRI, which is the same HDRI we're using in this course, it's Studio 3, you have it in the text folder. So what I wanted to do with the HDRI, its power is one and its rotation axis here. I just wanted it to come from the right. So as you can see, this part is lit and this part is not lit. So the HDRI, it's all also here, you can see in the reflections, it's coming from the right. And this is what I want to want for the HDRI. So I begin same as in the previous with the backlight. So my backlight, it's as you can see in the top view, it's here, and it's lighting the background. And its visibility is turned off here completely, and its intensity is eight. So for the back backlight, I'm gonna move it here. I'm actually not gonna move it. I'm just gonna leave it here and rename it here, it's backlight. So now we want to add a key light, let's turn it on. The key light is here and it's coming from the same direction as the HDRI is coming from and its intensity is 10. Let's jump to the front view, to the top view, as you can see it's here, sliding the scene from this angle and it's this is its height. So let's name this one a key light. So the same technique as before. Now we want to remove these shadows from the left. So we're going to put the left light, the fill light here to the left. I actually just like take this fill light and press down control and copy it here and rotate it, leave it here. And I've just deleted it because I already have it and then just turn it on and reduce its power. So we want the fill light to be much lesser in power than the key light. Okay, and now I actually have one more light here that I use to light up this part because I think it's too dark. So that light is here and I, I will name it fill light 2 and this one is the fill light 1. So the fill light 2 is pretty small, fill light, no, fill light 2 is small, yeah, and its intensity is 10. We can maybe put it to 15 and it will add some lights here on this area. Maybe let's even try making it 20. Yeah, it, it looks good, it looks good. And for the top light, as you can see, it's above the composition, it's here. The top light, let's name it top light. It comes from the top and its intensity is 8. And yeah, I'm happy with this. The HDR is turned on, we have our lights, so let's see the camera settings because we haven't touched that in the previous video. In the camera settings we have our exposure to 1.4 and the gamma to 0.75. So this is the camera you want to use. And yeah, I think this is the same camera from the starter scene, so you don't have to worry about this. 
And yeah, we have some post-processing here. You can pause the video and copy this if it's not the same on your computer. But yeah, this is the lighting I wanted to achieve for this composition. Composition, Great job, guys, and take care. I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.